Hello and welcome to StressAnxietyHypnosis.com My name is Jason Newland and this is the podcast Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks Please only ever listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. You can support this free service that I offer um, quite a few different ways. You can share the share the recordings on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, places like that. Um, or you can go to my website and you can uh, help to support the covering costs of running this service. So thank you in advance. So as I was walking into my bedroom to make this recording, because I'm sitting on the edge of my bed, probably more information than you need, but Andre's asleep in the living room. So I'm kind of in here so that I don't disturb him because when sometimes when he's awake, he is wide awake and uh, sounds like the the ending of a hypnosis, a hypnosis session doesn't it wide awake wide awake so um, I was thinking what about practical ideas to help with uh, situations of stress what about practical ideas? Not just all this uh, hypnosis -y ideas of relaxation and ways that you can um, prepare yourself or how to change the way you felt about something that happened in the past or, you know, things like that, which is what I usually do, sort of mainly. Obviously not to put that down because it's, it's what I do and it's what I believe if you listen to these, this podcast every day, maybe even if you listen to, if there's a particular recording that you like, then I mean what I do in those situations is I listen to it every day as well as listening to the next day's recording or the, the new one. There's a particular recording that I listen to every day at the moment by Earl Nightingale and it's called The Secret That Nobody Ever Told You or something like that. It lasts for 33 minutes and I listen to it uh, while I well, basically, sometimes I'll close my eyes and listen to it. Sometimes I'll be doing stuff on the internet and going through my stats and stuff. But it sinks in. It sinks in. And it's transformational. So, what I would say is this recording is going to be based on practical stuff and I invite you in the comments of wherever you watching this or listening to this maybe put in your own experience and your own um, suggestions something that you found that works for you and share that with the others so if you go to the website, that's probably one of the best places to do it. Under each recording, there's a comment box. You can leave a comment. This will also be on YouTube and various different podcasts. It just lets you share with others, but also other people can share with you the way I am. So I'm going to talk mainly from my own personal experience 
so there's no there's no relaxation involved in this session there's no anything like that it's really just me talking although it should probably still be fairly relaxing because I'm not shouting I'm not you know I'm not I'm not asking you to do anything although I will be making some recordings in the future where I will ask you to do some stuff that might even involve standing up and moving around but not in this recording and of course if you do when you do listen to those recordings you know you can obviously open your eyes otherwise you'll end up banging into things um, but even those still keep your eyes closed oh, no that's not but make sure you only listen when you can safely close your eyes so don't listen to anything that I do when you're driving so where do we start where to start how to practically help to you can say reduce the stress level or you could say what do you do to prevent the stress level from rising in the first place so there's one thing that I've been doing lately and I might have mentioned it is I've got some headphones for because I've got an iPhone I had it on a contract and that's all paid off now so that's done but the headphones that came with it had wires and I think my ears I think I've got a, abnormally large are not areolas that's the nipples isn't it you know the the, the hole in your ear not the hole that if you've if you've obviously got piercings you could say which hole I've got 17 piercings I mean the big hole the one where the hearing happens the hairy bit as you get older and um, I think they're a little bit too big for normal earbuds but anyway what I did I've got myself some better earbuds and I was going to get headphones but the point behind this is it takes away background sounds it's a twofold thing firstly it's focus it gives a focus and it takes away background sounds the main warning for this is to be careful what you're doing when you're wearing them so I wouldn't advise wearing them if you were driving. I wouldn't wear, wear advise wearing headphones um, necessarily if you were crossing the road or anything like that. Any situation where you need to be aware of what's going around, what's going on around you, then perhaps don't wear headphones. But things like sitting on a bus or sitting on a train waiting for a bus, waiting for a train it can be quite relaxing in a situation that may not normally be so and then there's little benefits um, and you probably get more of a benefit if you have big headphones that go over your ears is nobody's going to talk to you and that's obviously it's not going to be a benefit for everybody but I don't always necessarily want uh, a stranger to start talking to me especially if I've got 40 minutes till the next bus I mean that's that's you know not my thing I mean some people would love that but I don't not really for me so if you've got headphones in, chances are they're not going to start talking to you. And I seem to attract really drunk people <laughs> when I'm waiting for buses. 
and that's drunk people who are annoying enough any time but it's just in a pub you know waiting for a bus but uh, the only time I don't mind drunk people is when I'm drunk and that's it that's the only time and I don't really drink much apart from that drunk people are lovely but having headphones is a distraction it's a focus because you're focusing on the music or I like to listen to motivational talks uh, I've I was a member of Audible that's it so I've got some talking books there um, from some motivational speakers like Zig Ziglar Jim Rohn and it's Les Brown's another one and it's really really good sometimes I listen to the radio I personally listen to LBC which again is talk talking sometimes I listen to music I've got Amazon and Prime so I've got uh, the music thing and then you can download stuff onto your phone or your iPod or whatever, or whatever it is you've got so you don't use up data but this is one thing that I've found actually relaxes me and I forgot about it I used to use this technique back in the 90s, the early 90s and I forgot all about it because I'll tell you why I got, in, <laughs> I got into Buddhism and I was so um, convinced that I should be aware of everything that's going on around me and to not try and block stuff out and to be open to all the sounds and to open to everything and not be trying to distract myself but actually sometimes distraction is a really helpful thing not all the time but sometimes and listening to uh, when I used to walk to work in the early 90s I'd listen to LBC radio even back then and it gave me an uplift um, it's sort of yeah it just it was kind of mentally stimulating more so than listening to music because with music if you listen to the same song which I got a habit of doing if I got an album that I like I listen to it over and over again but it's the same over and over again with speech radio every second's different it's re of course it's repetition but it's still different words different people talking and but it's a distraction and it can also feel a bit like company listening to a conversation it can be stimulating but not in a a uh, stressful or anxiety kind of a way because that's not something that would be at all useful so having headphones listening to some music listening to um, anything you want really as long as it's safe to listen to when you're walking down the street So other ways, practical, practical ways, can you increase your sense of relaxation, decrease the potential of stress or panic? Well, what you wear can have an effect. Are you comfortable with the clothes that you're in? It might sound like a kind of strange question, but 
how relaxed can you be when you're wearing trousers that are just a bit too tight or you're wearing shoes that are maybe high heeled shoes that are nipping into your ankles or to your heels maybe you've got blisters how comfortable can you be maybe if you've got your hair tied back How comfortable can you be with a tight top on? So it's things like that that can actually make a big difference. Something as simple as making sure you've got the right size bra, the right fitted bra so that actually you're supported. And I'm not an expert on bra fittings but your waist your, your stomach you think about if you were doing yoga or if you were going to the gym you'd make sure that you had stretch you had a, the ability for your clothes to stretch so that you were able to relax doing it and you may say, yeah, but JJ, we can't all, can't go to work or go to a wedding in my yoga outfit. Which is a good point. Of course you can do whatever you want to do. But you get some very funny looks, no doubt. Unless it was a yoga wedding, if there is such a thing. And then it's like, okay, what can you do? It's the little things. If you've got shoes that are too tight, change them. Get some better shoes. Get some more comfortable shoes. Even, I mean, I'm not the most fashionable person. And I know that some people are very fashion conscious, like to the point of uh, willing to suffer physically in order to look the way they want to look and I respect that as that's everyone's choice but the more comfortable you feel physically the more comfortable you feel inside so if you can find some shoes that are, they fit your criteria of fashionability yet to still be nice and fit in nicely and comfortable then you're going to feel different it's the little things things like cutting your toenails I know this, this it might seem well what the hell are you I didn't expect him to talk about cutting toenails this is a podcast about panic attacks But it makes a difference just to, to to make sure you feel comfortable. I've gone out in the past and I've had one toenail that was a little bit too long digging into the other foot. Well, not the other foot, that would be weird. It wasn't that long. I haven't got my feet stuck together. But the, the digging into the other toe the whole day was uncomfortable. And it did stress me out. because there was nowhere that I could go I mean you know but that's just some people really do keep their toenails short and but it's the little things I know this is probably a bit weird but it's the little things that can make a difference to your sense of comfort that physically that lead to your emotional well-being in that moment preparation you know making sure that things are all sorted so if you do uh, I don't want to keep coming back to weddings but that's one of my like a public situation with lots of people not my favourite thing 
really you know it's it's really down there with the things that I really uh, for me stress inducing and I went to a wedding and all I had was a suit I don't, I mean, I, don't mean I, I did have underpants and a shirt and a tie and socks and shoes and hair but I mean well, I only had that one suit and I had a shirt that, was, that I hadn't worn for ages it was a white shirt and it was too tight on my belly and the suit was okay as far as it fitted me fine and the shoes um, I think the shoes were okay I think but the shirt was too tight which meant I was uncomfortable when I was sitting down standing up wasn't so bad but sitting down uncomfortable and it was really hot in the the evening when we had the dinner and everything a late afternoon it's really hot in there and I couldn't take the jacket off because my belly I was because it looked like I was pregnant so had I planned that a little bit better I could have prepared myself and gotten myself a shirt that was a lot baggier so that I could have taken the jacket off and just had the shirt outside of my trousers and I'd have felt a bit more relaxed within myself which would have reduced the stress levels that I had practical things even travelling you know not leaving things to the last minute so that you have to run for the train or run for the bus ah this is so obvious and so simple and I realise that but you know some of the most obvious and simple stuff is the stuff that actually can make a difference the amount of times that I've got up I've, I've left things to the last minute and I've had a bath my breakfast got dressed in 15 minutes and then run to get the bus and then run to get the train and just made it which is a really horrible way to start the day for me it's, and you know instead of just starting an hour earlier I could have had a slow bath relaxing breakfast walked up slowly to the or got dressed then walked up slowly to the bus maybe got the earlier bus so I didn't have to run for the train which meant there'd be no stress which meant I wouldn't be getting onto the train sweating and panting I don't always pant but you know what I mean like <laughs> like having run a bit too much not like a dog that's kind of needs to have a drink but probably similar so planning a little bit of planning and planning is boring let's face it it's not the most exciting thing some people like to plan so I'm not being derogative towards people that enjoy it but it's, it's a little bit it can be a little bit tedious 
that's definitely worthwhile if if you can foresee that you're doing something and you know that in the past that situation has uh, caused a lot of anxiety and stress in the past it's a case of looking at that situation what would have made it easier what would have taken the stress away or reduced the stress and then doing something about it and changing it for next time it's about learning and I've, I've repeated loads of pointless behaviours in my life loads of times probably thousands and thousands of times that I've not learnt so I'm not kind of I'm not coming from an angle of Mr Perfection because I'm far from it but these are ideas of ways to make things a little bit easier so that because sometimes that anxiety can be triggered by a stressful situation I know with panic attacks sometimes it can feel like it's just come from nowhere although often if you were able to trace back your thought patterning your thoughts before that first anxiety feeling occurred you may have been thinking about something that triggered that feeling that initial feeling that led to that anxiety so in a sense it's taking those triggers away reducing the chances of those triggers being triggered I guess pushed those buttons being pushed so if you reduce the ones that you know about at least there's less chance of that leading to the maybe the triggers that you don't know about being activated You know, because you know, I might get on a train, or I'm running for the bus because I've left everything to the last minute. I get on, I'm all sweaty. It's maybe it's summer, and then perhaps someone will get some air, you know, not air freshener, but some deodorant or perfume and start spraying it, not at me, but in a way that I'm thinking, oh, so they're saying I stink or I'll just be in a bad mood and then my bad mood perhaps leads to me being oversensitive or rude even to other people not like horribly rude but just not particularly pleasant and then another person may react to me not being particularly pleasant and their reaction could trigger my anxiety it's like a roll on a roll on effect so it could be a case of looking at your day and just like okay what what can you do to make things easier for yourself because that's all part of the being kind to yourself being gentle to yourself what can you do different if you've got shoes that are uncomfortable can you wear more comfortable shoes if you've got a car that won't start 
and you have to spend you know 40 minutes every morning trying to get the thing started perhaps getting a different car uh, I know there can be all issues financial but I'm not interested in that because it's not my not my business there's always going to be excuses why we can't do things well, I don't have any money either but the amount of stress that you might be putting yourself through every day trying to get that car started I mean possibly it would be you'd be in a better position just to get the bus or the train as far as emotionally imagine if every day you got woken up by a, a bucket of cold water just poured over your face and you're in bed asleep and someone chucks a bucket of cold water over you and that's the way you wake up every day how many good days are you going to have how, how many really pleasant starts you know how, how often are you going to feel really good at the beginning of the day I can say in my situation it would be zero apart from the fact that I'd end up in prison if someone did that to me but you know without going all that way it's, it'd be a horrible way to wake up but in some ways we do that to ourselves in perhaps not as a drastic way but in other ways like maybe leaving it too late for the alarm staying up too late in the evening maybe leaving things to the last minute which I am very capable of doing so what can you do practically to change or prepare your day ahead or your week ahead or some specific event what can you do to change your experience of that event and I realise that's a question that only you can answer because your life is specific to you they're those practical things it's like I live in this flat and I had one incident where the light bulb went out it sounds like a really interesting story doesn't it be, oh remember that story Jason told about the light bulb when it went out Oh, that was interesting that was life transforming no the light went out and then my friend because I'm not very tall so he he's, he just can put it in without standing on a chair and I don't I don't trust my chairs to take my weight not standing on them so he put the light bulb in and it broke I know, no, what he did. I think he took it out and he handed it to me, and it, and it was hot, and I broke it, something like that. So I didn't have a light bulb, and anyway, I kind of, I got very, my stress levels really went up because I didn't have any light in the in the living room. And you could say it's such a small thing, but at the time it was bigger than it needed to be not the living room it's the same size I'm just it's just it just got to me for some reason so I thought afterwards what can I do to prevent 
this happening again. So that weekend I ordered a big pack of light bulbs. And I admit that is probably the most boring story you'll probably ever hear. Yeah, I'm not pretending that was, that is definitely not a wedding speech. I'm stuck on the idea of weddings today. But now, a light bulb goes out, I just change it. The same as with batteries, I've got a supply of batteries that I can use. In fact, I stock up in quite a few things. I've got stock up on deodorant, soap, toothpaste. Sometimes I've literally got a storage cupboard full of all kinds of stuff that would last for six months. Like washing up liquid and that kind of stuff. And that's learning from the experience of running out of stuff, running out of breakfast cereal and no shops being open near where I live and being hungry. So that's not going to happen again. And that's another thing, eating. You need to make sure you eat. And you may say, well, of course I eat, otherwise I'd be dead. I don't mean make sure you've eaten in your life I mean you need to have that energy I know that too much sugar and excess salt and stuff can or you know perhaps can lead to a bit of a, a heart pumping a bit too much we could lead to, lead to uh, anxiety or the feeling of anxiety even when it's not but then which could then lead to anxiety but you need to eat. You need to make sure that you've had your food before you leave the house. If you, you know, if you're going in the morning, make sure you have your breakfast. Don't go too long without eating. Don't go like the whole day without eating. You need to eat. So I know that I get grumpy if I haven't eaten. I know that I feel a bit ill if I go too long without eating. And I'm not talking just a few hours, I'm talking, you know, if I go sort of eight, nine hours, that's kind of too long. And I was at my brother's wedding. See, I'm stuck on weddings, going back there again. And I remember saying to the the priest or the lady who was doing the ceremony I said how long is this going to last before we started and she said why I said I'm hungry she said she thought I was joking she said oh we be sitting not long about 20 minutes I said can you speed it up a bit she said what I said I'll give you I'll give you a pound if you can do it in 10 minutes she thought I was joking again but I was hungry I needed to eat because I hadn't eaten since the morning and this was now getting on to probably about 4 o'clock 3 o'clock it's about taking care of yourself physically as well as emotionally but the physical side is really important as well. Making sure that you're comfortable, that your clothes fit in a way that it's not causing you discomfort. It's not about feeling a million dollars, although that's probably useful for feeling quite good about yourself. It's about comfort you know the opposite to discomfort so whatever that entails even if it means if you've got a journey to go on a train 
travel when it's quieter travel when it's you know when you know that the train's going to be less full so you can get yourself a seat so there's less people less sound you know little things make sure you've got your ticket with you when you get off the train or easy access to the ticket when the ticket inspector comes so you haven't got to spend five minutes getting stressed looking for it in your handbag or your your bag or your coat or whatever just little things that really can make the difference it doesn't take much brain power to to prepare it doesn't it doesn't take a lot of energy to prepare it's just perhaps a little bit tedious doing it making sure that you've got enough money in your wallet or your purse or your pocket or wherever you keep your money in your bra or in your socks I don't know people keep their money in all different places instead of relying on the cash machine the ATM instead of relying on that to be open the other side of the train or the the place you're going to what if it's closed what if it's out of order what are you going to do then if you need cash it's just those little things that really reduces stress and you know I realise we can't be prepared for everything but it's like sometimes it can be useful to write down a list you know like a shopping list but without groceries on it a list of things that you need to make sure for you it's not for anyone else it's for you to make sure that you've a bit prepared so that you can relax your mind and once it's done once you've done those things and ticked off those things then you can relax because in the case of a train journey ticket person comes along your ticket's there you've got it in your top left pocket where you always keep it and you hand it over there you go, done you get to your destination you go to the credit card you know, the ATM, cash machine oh, it's not working don't matter I've got cash in my wallet or my purse or my my backpack, my hat. So you haven't, you know, it's like one less thing that you need to think about. So it's like a bit of preparation. Instead of preparation H, preparation R. Preparation relaxation preparation relax so that's just a few little ideas a few little practical thoughts and I realise I've not even really not even touched the sides on this one I mean there's so many different things that you could make changes for yourself and because I don't live your life I don't know what your circumstances are as far as work uh, socially family uh, so you can start maybe looking and noticing when you feel uncomfortable and then think well 
why why am I feeling uncomfortable is it because of how you physically feel is it because you're hungry is it because you've eaten too much is it because of the clothes you're wearing are too tight or too loose when I was younger a lot of things happened when I was younger I used to be really really skinny now I'm the opposite to that now but my trousers used to fall down I don't mean literally down to the ankles but they used to, I used to be constantly pulling my trousers up all I needed to do was get a belt that was it which entailed going to the shop and buying a belt kept putting it off and I'd be getting so frustrated with the trousers and to keep pulling them up even when I was walking down the street keep pulling them up every you know every like 10 minutes then I got the belt eventually no longer had to pull my trousers up it was sorted done instantly just for the sake of a little bit of effort and I don't know probably five pound ninety nine to buy the belt and that's another really boring story that's that's, right, that's as boring as the is the other one? I don't know. I'm not sure I've got I've got more boring stories than that. So just have a have a think, maybe of the things that you find you get uncomfortable, the type of places when you get uncomfortable. Just in the with the The reasoning behind thinking of that, the intention is to correct it, to make a change so that it's one less time where you feel rela- you know uncomfortable, one more time where you can feel relaxed. It's like a tick that, and it can be gone. You don't have to think about it again. You know, if you, and I've done this myself, if you tread on an upturned plug that's on the floor and you've got no shoes or or anything on, it's uh, one of the most, uh, the worst pains ever. It's really so painful. Those pins digging into your foot. Now, if you leave that plug where it is, and continue to walk around without any shoes on then that means you're not learnt from it and there's a good chance it's going to happen again but if you have one trial learning and that happens once and you never allow it to happen again whenever you see a a plug first of all you don't leave plugs on the floor but if you had a plug and you see it you move it and my boy Andre he's a ferret one trial learning once he discovers how to do something that's it he can do it over and over again he discovered how to get onto the windowsill. Once he'd done that, he was up there all the time. He discovered how to get up to the the bookcase and knock all the book all the books off of the bookcase. I put all the books up back again and got him off. No, he kept doing it. One trial learning for him. So I think we're 
we're capable of doing what a, a little ferret can do. He is very intelligent, but you know, he licks his own bum. So I think we we can perhaps learn something from that. Not the, the bum bit, but the the one trial learning. So if something causes stress and anxiety, it doesn't mean you don't do it again necessarily, but it might mean that. But maybe you can make changes so that it doesn't cause uh, the same level of emotional distress that it did. So that, that's all I've got to say on this. That's well, not all I've got to say. There's always, there's always more to say. But I'll leave you just with the, just with that. Um, to look at your own situation. And what changes can you make? You know, I mean, I've got I've got a million different examples probably that I could give, but then that would be a really long recording, and they'd just be my experiences. And I know that my experience and my life is not the same as your experiences and your life, because we're all different. So I wish you well, and I shall see you next time, or speak to you next time. Take care, and remember to be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye.